Hey, sixth graders, in this video today, we're going to go through and talk about the agenda of what it is you're going to work on in class today since I'm not there. There'll be a little bit of class notes for you to take some notes. I'm going to explain the directions like I did yesterday for the gizmo on how to finish the, the gizmo. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing is, let's pause the video and go get your binders if you don't have them and find your cell notes. Part one looks like this right here. Cell notes, part one. And we just have one slide to do here at the bottom. Okay, go ahead, pause the video, go get that. Set up, pencil, and then we'll get started. All right. So, last time, we did the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. And if you remember, the mitochondria is one of these energy transformers here, an energy transformer in the cell. And its job inside of the cell is to take food and to turn it into energy because our cells need energy to do their processes. We need energy to be able to do our processes. If all of our processes are working properly, we feel great. If they're not, we don't feel good. And so it's really important to make sure that we're eating healthy, enough food, so that our body has the right kind of energy and enough of it to do all of its processes. You guys need even a little bit more as your bodies are growing and changing and things. All right, so that's the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, turning food into energy. There's another energy transformer, but this one is only in plants. And in a moment, you'll see why. It's called chloroplasts. Okay, so you're writing down that word chloroplast on letter B, lowercase b, under energy transformers. All right, so a chloroplast also kind of looks like the mitochondria, except if it's in color, it's usually in green. And it usually has these stacks or these lines in here, kind of look like pancakes, green pancakes being stacked up. And inside the, inside the chloroplast, excuse me, they have this pigment, this green pigment that's called chlorophyll. And this pigment gets produced with sunlight, right? So when it's sunny for long periods of time, like during the summertime and during the spring, that's why the trees come out of being dormant from the winter. And now you get our buds and then you get the leaves. You have these nice green leaves, the grass is green, all of this stuff because chlorophyll is being produced because there's lots more sunlight because the days are longer. There's another really important thing about this, though. That pigment is coming there because the chlorophyll literally is absorbing the sunlight. And the reason why that's important is because plants need sunlight as part of the process called photosynthesis. You guys should know what photosynthesis is from elementary school. Next year, in seventh grade, you're going to do more with photosynthesis. Okay? Photosynthesis is light energy that makes food. Now, specifically, it's called glucose, which is like a sugar or a carbohydrate. It's not like it's making steak or eggs or pizza or something for the plant. It's glucose, which is a carbohydrate. But that glucose has lots of energy in it. And so we eat food, right? Humans eat food. Dogs eat food. We eat food. That's how we get our food. That's how we get our carbohydrates and proteins and things, things like glucose. And then the mitochondria take those nutrients and turn it into energy. Well, the plant can't eat, right? The plant can't eat. So it does photosynthesis. It takes in that sunlight and makes food. Now this food, this glucose, is then shipped over to the mitochondria, and the mitochondria for the plant cell, just like for the animal cell, turns it into energy. So the mitochondria is in both animals and plants because it just takes the nutrients, turns it into energy. Chloroplasts are only in plants because they can't eat. So how do they get the food? They make it, photosynthesis. 
once it's made, it then goes over to the mitochondria so it can then get turned into energy, which we need. So it's not in animal cells, it's only in plant cells. And it acts a lot like a solar panel, right? Solar panels take in the sunlight to turn into electricity. These take in the sunlight to turn it into food. So it's like a solar panel, taking in sunlight to make something else. And then that's the chloroplasts. Okay? So you're writing in that whole example. That's the example, like solar panels, you know, this whole thing here. So that's what you are typing at the bottom of your paper for the last bullet point. Okay, if you need to, pause it. Make sure you have this done. If your paper is not completely filled out, it's not completely filled out, you need to email me and let me know that you're missing some notes so that I can get you what slides you need and you can finish copying it because this should be done. We're going to start the second page next week on Monday. Okay, don't do anything else right now. Just watch the video. We'll transition to the next thing in a moment, but I want to go through the directions one more time with you so you know what you're doing with this. Okay. Okay, the other thing you're doing is the gizmo. Piece of paper. You guys have. Okay. It has the front and the back. Over here. From yesterday in class, I left this up tells you what order you're supposed to be doing things. The first thing is you are to read the background information, the front half, I'm sorry, the first half of the front page. Highlighters are out over here. Take your highlighter, highlight important information. You do not need to annotate, you just need to highlight. Two, you go to the gizmo. Hit sample. Oh, when you go to the gizmo too, I'm going to have up over here on the other side. Oops, over here. It's not there yet, but it'll be there tomorrow. It'll have the username because it's my username. And then as you get into your class, hopefully you have your password saved. Okay? Okay. You go in, you click on sample to get your animal cell here, that piece of skin, skin cell. Then you need to, down here, zoom it to 2,000. Okay? You now use this to click on something like this thing here. You click on it. It highlights it for you, and it tells you, oh, this is the Golgi apparatus. It also tells it to you over here. Okay? It's all over here, too. Golgi apparatus. You use this to find the organelle that looks similar to that to label it at the top. You're going to label all the different organelles up here. That's the second thing you do after highlighting. And then you use this information of what it says here about the Golgi apparatus and its description about what it does. And you use that to help you do the matching here on the bottom. You have all of these different descriptions that match to the words. These descriptions are usually shorter than this on the website. So you're going to have to really read that because these are kind of a summary of what's on the website. So they're not word for word. It makes it a little bit tricky, okay? but you guys can do it. All right, you're working on that, trying to finish it. If you finish that in class today, turn it into Miss P. Then the last thing is the Edpuzzle. If you go to Edpuzzle, you'll see the assignment. I'm not posting it in Google Classroom. It's in Edpuzzle like always. If you go into Edpuzzle, go to Science, you'll see parts of a cell number two. All right, that's it. Have a good weekend. I'll be back on Monday. Make sure you are doing your work as you go through this and the Ed Puzzle. Okay, the expectation is to get stuff done. I know that we're not always great at doing that when I'm not here, but it has to get done. You guys are running out of time. If you don't do work, there's not going to be time to get it done, and it's going to affect your grade. Use your time wisely. All right, I'll see you Monday. Have a good weekend.